Welcome back to the Romans International YouTube channel. Apologies, it's been a long time since our last video. It's just been an incredibly busy time recently, partly due to all of this, our new showroom, uh, which is very nearly finished. We will do a full tour at a later date, but for now, this video is all about the most hotly anticipated car of the year, the Porsche 992 GT3. Now you've probably seen various videos online of exactly how it drives and all the differences from the 991. On our channel, we like to talk a little bit more about the sort of process of buying it, choosing the right options, and hopefully I can give you a few tips and advice on how to choose the right spec for you. So one of the most distinguishing features of the new 992 GT3 is definitely that new design for the rear wing. They call it a swan neck design. I think it's beautifully done, but you can choose to have that wing totally taken off by getting something called the GT3 Touring. Now, anyone is gonna be very lucky to get an order slot for a GT3, let alone a GT3 Touring. So you might have to wait to pick one up second hand, uh, but the Touring, it was initially introduced on the 991. Some people thought a GT3 without a wing, you know, it wasn't a proper GT3, but they've been super popular to the point where the values between the GT3 and GT3 Touring on the 991, there's a huge disparity. We're talking over 50,000 pounds, bearing in mind they basically mechanically the exact same car, but it just does hit a sweet spot with some people who like their cars a bit more understated, who have always loved the idea of driving a GT3, but just find the wing a little bit too shouty. So with the 992, obviously the secret's out, the Tourings are probably gonna be worth a little bit more, but for the real GT3 enthusiasts, the traditionalists, you're gonna want that wing. I mean, just look at it. That is a proper GT3. One final point on the Touring, whereas on the 991, you could only spec it with a manual gearbox. Now on the 992 GT3 Touring, you can also get it with PDK. And that is the next question. Do you go for the manual or do you go for the PDK? It's definitely one of the most important choices you're gonna to have to make especially when it comes down to how you want to actually drive your GT3. So you have the six speed manual gearbox, which is in the blue car, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, in this black car, you have the seven speed PDK. So note that that's one gear less than what you have in the rest of the 992 model lineup, which has an eight speed PDK. That's because it saves weight by getting rid of one of those gears, um, but the manual is actually lighter altogether. Um, but with the PDK, you'll notice it actually looks very much like the manual gearbox. That's because Porsche are trying to make it feel and look more like a manual. Um, so it's a little bit more engaging and it works like you just press the button on the top and then you can pull back into reverse, neutral or drive. But if you flick the gear stick over to the left, it puts you into manual mode. And that actually starts to give you this feeling of changing gear. It's a short shift gearbox, but you can push it and pull it to change gear. And it does just give that little bit of extra engagement. It's not quite like the manual, but it definitely helps make you feel closer to the car. The thing with PDK, it is a quicker car. It's half a second quicker off the line um, to 0 to 62. And it does, it's just instantaneous acceleration, instantaneous gear changes. There is a reason why all Porsche Motorsport and all their successful competition cars use the PDK gearbox. You do still get the paddle shifts behind the steering wheel. Um, but what I would say is the PDK is a more efficient car. Okay, so now we are sat in the manual car. And as you can see, you have this lovely short little stubby manual gear lever. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, the actual sensation of moving the gears around properly, it just feels a lot more involving, let alone when you're on the road. There's something just very romantic, I think, about driving a manual Porsche GT car. And yes, it might be easier to make the odd mistake when you're changing gears, but that's all the more rewarding when you get it right. And it is lighter, as I've said, 17 kilograms lighter, I think, 
has a slightly higher top speed, 199 miles an hour compared to 198 on the PDK. The, the manual gearbox, there's a reason why at least half the people are gonna choose it. Is there any difference in value for resale? If the 991 is anything to go by, there's about between five and 10 grand difference with the manuals being a little bit more expensive. So it will be interesting to see if that's the case with the 992. Okay, so a couple of the big decisions are out of the way. Are you going touring or not? Are you going PDK or manual? The next thing you're probably gonna to wanna to choose is the color for your car. So, as standard, there are four colors you get uh, on the GT3. That is black, white, guards red, and racing yellow. These are all flat colors, non-metallic. They don't cost anything. Porsche would give you these colors for free. Um, white was the actual color of the first GT3 we had. I think the car looks really sort of pure and clean. Um, black obviously looks the car a little bit more stealthy and meaner, a little bit harder to keep clean though. Guards red, a nice color, looks very vibrant on the car. I would say on the 991 GT3, the guards red cars I've noticed tend to be a little bit cheaper, so bear that in mind. And for racing yellow, I think that's a braver choice, a bit more niche. I guess if you're one of the only ones that opts for it, it means you'll have one of the only ones. Um, so one step up from that is you get the metallic colors. These are 875 pounds. You get the metallic black like this car. This is jet black metallic. I think the car looks great. Um, you also get Carrara white, the metallic white. You have Agate gray. It's a couple of different silvers. GT silver tends to be the more desirable one. Dolomite silver has a slightly bluer tint. Um, and then you also have the lovely gentian blue, which is a beautiful color. After the metallic colors, you can go up to what Porsche refer to as the special paints. These are just over two and a half grand. Um, the likes of crayon or chalk as it's known in America. Um, that is still a very popular choice. Some people think crayon sort of had its day, but we're seeing huge demand still across the whole Porsche model range. You also have lava orange you could go for, bit of an acquired taste maybe. Um, I always think of the Gen 1 991 GT3 RS when you have lava orange. There's also Python green, at least that's a new color um, or a fairly new color, not to be confused with lizard green, which is the launch color for the 991.2 GT3 RS. But then finally, you have this, the launch color. This is the shark blue. Not only does it have a very cool name, I just think this works so well for the car. It really, I think already is the signature color for this car. Um, I guess the downside of this color is if everyone goes for it, the market is going to be flooded with shark blue cars. So you're not going to have the most unique spec, but yeah, I mean, look at it. It is stunning. It is also worth mentioning some of the lucky ones might have got to choose a PTS car, so a paint to sample color where you can choose pretty much any color you want. Um, I've actually already seen a couple that have both chosen the Grigio Telesto Lamborghini paint, which looks very cool, but we're bound to see some really nice one-off paints. Okay, so the next big choice is something I get asked a lot about from clients saying, should I spec ceramic brakes? Are they worth the six and a half thousand pounds they cost from new? My answer is almost always yes. Um, firstly, the brakes are not only bigger, they're sharper and they're lighter. So they're not only reducing weight, but they're improving the braking performance. One of the big factors about ceramics is they don't transfer heat anywhere near as much as steels do. So obviously when the brakes are getting hotter, they're gonna fade more and reduce performance. So ceramics will last a lot longer because they just don't transfer heat uh, like steels do. Another factor is brake dust. Ceramics do not generate anywhere near as much brake dust as steels do. Brake dust can make the alloys look a little bit dirty, you don't quite get that nice sheen that ceramics give you. Um, and actually, if you leave your car in the drive or in the street for an extended period of time, especially in cold climates, steel brakes can start to rust a little bit. So I often hear the argument that I'm not gonna track my car, so why would I need ceramics? But why wouldn't you want all those benefits I've mentioned for road use as well? I mean, I get it, six and a half thousand pounds is a lot of money for a set of brakes. Um, you know, when the, arguably the steels are very, very good brakes. Um, that six and a half grand could be spent on other options. You know, the car doesn't really need them. 
but for my money, I would always spec them, even just for resale. It's very rare you find someone who specifically doesn't want ceramic brakes, where you do get a lot of people that would only buy a car with ceramic brakes. So if you spec steels, you're basically ruling out a large proportion of potential buyers for when you come to sell it. You know, let's remember this is a GT3. This is not a Carrera S or even a Carrera GTS where ceramics, I would say, are less important. Um, there is a reason why McLaren and Ferrari have ceramic brakes on their entire model range as standard. Um, you know, the only reason you wouldn't want ceramics is if you really even need to save the money or potentially if you are going to absolutely hammer your car around the track regularly where you might end up having to replace the brakes. You have to bear in mind ceramic brakes are very expensive to, to replace uh, and that's not something you're going to want to do. So just quickly on the wheels, so for the first time the GT3 actually has split sizes, so 20 inch wheels on the front and 21s on the back. They all share the same designed wheel, there's only one option here, the forged center locks, but you can choose the color. Obviously here you've got the satin black wheels, on the black car you might have noticed that sort of gold color, they call it neodyne. Um, which I think is going to be very popular, but obviously you can get silver or dark grey wheels as well. When you come to the brake calipers, so before if you spec ceramic brakes, you used to always have to have yellow brake calipers. Not everyone loved that, and that's one of the reasons why some people didn't go for ceramic brakes, so they didn't like the calipers. But now, Porsche have given you the option to get black brake calipers, regardless of which brakes you have, um, and that definitely just gives you that sort of more stealthy look. So one of the new options for the 992 GT3 is this, the lightweight carbon fiber roof. Costs just over two and a half thousand pounds. I mean, Porsche so far have refrained from following in the footsteps of Ferrari and McLaren where you could just spec carbon absolutely everywhere. But this is a great addition. You can also get carbon fiber mirrors, but I think because this is a new option, people are gonna really, really want it. You know, it doesn't only look amazing, it's functional too, because it's, it's reducing the weight of the car. It was previously only available on the Visac package on the GT2 RS and the GT3 RS so now the fact you can get it on a GT3 it's just going to add extra kudos to your car. Okay so next up you might want to consider what lights to get um, so you do get LED headlights as standard on the GT3 you can upgrade these so for about 400 pounds you can get the PDLS the Porsche dynamic light system these basically light up around the corners as you turn in pretty useful. Um, you can also pay to get a shark blue ring in the headlights. Uh, I think that's another 400 pounds, but if you really want to push the boat out, I think it's almost two and a half thousand pounds. You can get the matrix beam LED headlights. So that is a much more technologically advanced light. Um, I think it's got 84 different LED headlights and they actually dip certain ones depending whether cars are coming towards you but keeping the road illuminated ahead of you. Obviously a great safety option. If you're driving at night, that might be a good one, but not essential for most people. Final thing you might want to just look at is the exclusive design tail lights. That just gives you a different look from behind as well. Okay, so back onto the interior and there are a few more options to consider here. One of them is the Club Sport package. This is a no cost option. What it gives you is it gives you the roll bar, which is bolted to the body, obviously for safety reasons. Um, it also gives you four point harnesses for the driver and it gives you the fire extinguisher. These haven't yet been fitted to this car. But obviously, you are, if you are gonna take your car on a track regularly, Club Sport package is definitely something you'll want. Um, it's not an essential though, of course, if you're a bit more of a casual track day user, you can do without them. What it does though, is it does force you to buy the lightweight carbon fiber bucket seats. They normally cost 3,788 pounds. Um, I think worth every penny. Most GT3 uh, buyers tend to want the carbon fiber seats. Um, you know, they are actually quite comfortable. Um, compared to a lot of other bucket seats out there. Um, but if you really do want just comfort and more of a comfort spec, you can go with the standard seats. These are called sports seats. They're four-way electrical, or you can upgrade and pay a bit more for the adaptive sports seats. They're 18-way maneuverable. Um, but yeah, look, it depends on the kind of use you want for your GT3 as to what seats you're gonna get. But for my money, the carbon fiber bucket seats are the ones to have.
Okay, so in terms of the actual materials inside the car, you'll notice it's a really nice mix of race techs, which other people will know as Alcantara, leather, and then this particular car has been specified with the carbon fiber interior package. That costs just under a thousand pounds. It gives you carbon all along here on the dashboard, a little bit here on the center console, bit on the door trim and on the door sill guards as well. You can pay extra to get matte carbon fiber. Me personally, I prefer gloss, um, so I wouldn't go for that, but each to their own. Other than that, you've got Alcantara or Racetex pretty much everywhere on the steering wheel, on the gear lever, here on the storage bin. Um, you've got even sun visors. I mean, some of this is optional, some of this is standard. On the seats, on the bucket seats, you get the race techs all through the middle, and it's all perforated, and then you get the leather bolsters. Um, but yeah, what a lovely cabin to be in. Um, in terms of the actual convenience options, one of the things is the chrono package uh, that is only a three or four hundred pound option which gives you that clock bang in the middle of your dashboard the analog and the digital clock don't not to be confused with sport chrono package plus which you'll find on the carreras and the carrera gts's which does actually give you different driving modes on the gt3 that's all standard it's just the clock you get so don't get too caught up on it um, obviously some people will think why would i want a big clock in the middle of my dashboard but uh, many 911 owners that have owned 911s for many years will feel like if it's not there almost feels like something's missing um, in terms of the actual sort of more tech um, you have quite a lot of standard you get the full pcm you get apple carplay as standard the little things you can upgrade is the rear parking camera uh, rear parking sensors always good to have that i think for parking um, one of the big ones, and we've discussed this on previous videos, is the front axle lifting. Um, look, if you do live in a town or if you have speed bumps around you, steep drive, you know, you're going to want to have it. Um, and again, for resale, it's a very important thing. It's another thing that if you're coming to sell it and your car doesn't have lift, you are ruling out a lot of buyers for your car. I get the whole thing. You're specking it for yourself, not for the next guy but the smart money would be on getting the lift. Um, bear in mind also, if you're getting your car on and off trailers, always gonna help for the driver to have that, raise that lift just to get it off a lot easier. Um, other little things you can get, the sound system here, the standard, you get the sound package plus. It's an eight speaker system, it's an analog system, it's not great. Personally, I would always try and look for a car with the Bose sound system. It was about a thousand pound option, just gives you surround sound. It's a much better system. Okay, so hopefully that covers most of the important decisions you'll have to make when looking to spec your GT3 up or waiting for a second hand one. Um, there are lots of other little things you can look out for, personal touches that you might do, whether that's changing the colors of the dials, changing the colors of the seat belts, like our shark blue car with the shark blue seat belts. There's different sticker sets you can get and a number of other things just to give it that bit more personal touch. But look, that's the first video we've done in a while. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hopefully one, now we're in our new show and we're gonna do a lot more regular videos. Yeah.